So we are going to walk through um, a process of, if you have, uh, Carl mentioned this earlier, if you have code in GitHub and it's ready to be made publicly available, although a GitHub repository is somewhat public, can be public or private, by itself, a, a GitHub repository may not satisfy F-Score and NSF's data sharing requirements because uh, those repositories are ephemeral. They change rapidly. Um, they can be removed or deleted. And what we want is something that has a DOI. Mm -hmm. Because when you give a, a, a digital asset a DOI, it is you're committing basically to that that object being perpetually available, or at least for, for the pretty long term. And so there is a process that we're gonna we're gonna walk through here where you can take a GitHub code repository and you can snapshot it into mm -hmm. a release and publish that release on Sonodo so that let's say you need that same code, but you want to update it for your next project. That snapshot of how you analyzed your data for the last project is frozen and it remains accessible and available to other people. And you don't have to worry about what if somebody asked me a year from now, the code that I used to do that one analysis, it's already been saved in Zenodo. Um, and so the process here that we're gonna demonstrate, we have documented it, is you, it is uh, something that I had to learn the hard way. You do have to start from Zenodo, you sign into Zenodo uh, using an ORCID, you connect that to a GitHub account. We'll show you how you can uh, click on, there's a GitHub feature within Sonodo, and then you essentially enable a repository, and then you go to GitHub and you prepare that, that repository for a release. And we're going to step through that process right now. So like I said, we start from Sonodo, and Carl is, oh, we were gonna, this is already being recorded, great. Yes. Um, and we can we can oh, slice sorry. this out. <laughs> I was sure. grabbing your mouse. <laughs> no, <that's fine. laughs> so this process starts from Zenodo. And if you click on uh, if you're signed in and if you have an ORCID, you can mm -hmm. sign in using your ORCID ID. Uh, we're going to you can either go to settings or I just come to this menu and click on GitHub. It's been a long time since I connected my GitHub account to my Zenodo account, and I, I suppose it's been a long time for Carl too. I can't elaborate on the process, but I recall it was pretty straightforward. Um, you probably put in your GitHub ID. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You just log in. Well, I did. I made it even easier because I think I used my GitHub login for Zenodo. Okay. And that streamlines right. it that even further. Mm -hmm. And so the process is outlined here that we're going to step through as well uh, about enabling a repository. Then you go to GitHub and create the release. Um, and this third part is, is somewhat automatic. So we can see here that Carl has all of these repositories that have a green bar next to them. Carl has already published and shared a snapshot of those repositories through Zenodo. And now we have a list of ones that have not been shared and we're looking for, Carl has way more repositories than I do. <laughs> and they all start with Carl Van there Okay, <laughs> so uh, we teach a monthly workshop series uh, on data science type topics. And uh, we have one where we introduce R and R Studio. And we decided that this mm -hmm. one uh, is ready for um, uh, a release on Zenodo. So I just come over here and where there's this toggle switch, it says off, I turn it on, scroll back up. Carl, do you generally go to GitHub or do you, I refresh the page because you can also Go to GitHub. Yeah, I generally create the releases in GitHub, right. but there is the link right there under two, create a release. Right. Okay. Well, actually, first you have to go into the individual, Whoops. so go back. Yeah, you go to the, uh, the individual uh, 
entry for that that linked repository. So if you go back right. down to the R Studio, there's the that oh, from there. there. So now it's 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 listed up here on top. So if we click on this, see there you have the create release button in yep. the top right corner. And you could just go to GitHub and do a release without clicking the button from Zenodo and it, it will still pick up that release. It and all so, both processes take you to this page yes. in GitHub. And so yeah, and let me actually show you how to do it from the GitHub side. So if we come to CCR Studio over here on the right hand side, there's a tab for releases. So to return, we had access this GitHub repository from the Zenodo page. It's also possible to go into a GitHub repository um, at any point once you have uh, enabled the access from the Zenodo side the way we demonstrated. You can create a release by going to the repository's top page and clicking this link on the right hand side to create a release. And so again, this is where documentation comes in handy. Uh, a lot of times when I've done this, I have this information that I need and I just copy and paste it into the form here. Um, the main thing we want is a tag. And in this case, a tag is gonna be a version number. So what do we want? Version 1.0, Carl? Um, sure, and one of the, and this is where, yeah, Developing a, a tagging scheme that's consistent with sort of your use, your purpose for the repository comes in handy because um, the I will often, and this is something that John alluded to a few minutes ago, if you want to take snapshots of what you have in GitHub that are aligned with sort of the state of your code and maybe the data that you might have in GitHub mm -hmm. at a particular publication or presentate for a particular publication or presentation. I'll often start with a version and then I may actually add a very short um, additional uh, few letters to it or something to, that, you know, back to the description, you know, informational inf information in the version number. Mm -hmm that is complemented by the more narrative information where it's like, like I had like, you know, a poster or, or the date of a poster or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I key that in in the descriptive information as well so that it's easy to remind myself later what the particular releases are for. So I'm mm -hmm. looking through, it's like, oh, somebody's asking about the, the particular analysis that I did for that paper two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so here's the release from that specific paper, as opposed to looking at the current state of my code, which is probably totally different by that point. Mm -hmm. yep. So we create, we, we add a tag, we make sure to create a new tag, uh, version 1.0.0 on publish. I notice uh, I don't do a lot with branches in GitHub, but if you have multiple branches, uh, you can publish a particular branch. That's another way you can publish something that's mm -hmm. specific to a particular process. Um, <clears throat> there's some metadata here. So what do we want to say? I'm just going to say uh, University of New Mexico. I might have to go in. I'm a terrible typist and edit this metadata. Uh, <laughs> services. Copy code. And there's a brief description here. We're just going to say um, And while John is typing that in, I'll mention that there's a uh, probably a more advanced approach for this metadata where you can actually create a file in your repository 
that has this and other structured information mm -hmm. that Zenodo looks for. And if it finds it, it will use that mm -hmm. to read the metadata. Um, it's more advanced because you're editing this structured JavaScript object notation file and Zenodo gets a little twitchy. Happen, so. <laughs> and so, yeah, we generally don't teach that first, <laughs> but, but it is, it, you know, it is in the long run, especially if you're doing a lot of releases and you want to kind of tweak the metadata mm -hmm. with those releases, having that, that metadata file in your repository can actually simplify that repeated publication process because mm -hmm. you're not entering it here as much as having the more detailed information in that being pulled from that other file. Yes, and so now we have given it a title and added a brief description, and we are just going to scroll down here, and you can do a pre-release, but we discussed this yesterday, and we're pretty comfortable letting it out there in the wild. So we're going to publish this release. Now, if I go back to Zenodo, I think I... You may have closed the Zenodo window. Oh, yeah, when you, yeah. yeah. Now, if I come back, go to GitHub. We scroll down. We saw before this uh, UNM RDS CC, it, it didn't have any highlighting here. It wasn't red or green, mm -hmm. it was just blank. But now this green shows us that it's been published. And this is what we really want to pass on to. Uh, Selena or Sarah or to us here, and we'll pass it on to them. Yeah. It's, the, <laughs> it's the DOI. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's yeah, there, if, if you click on that, it'll take you. So here's a brief record. And if I actually click on this DOI, this they may still be creating this item on the back end, but let's see. Oh, there we go. And so there's our title. There's the original GitHub repository name. Here's all the files and uh, the information. So now we can make whatever changes we want to this repository. Uh, this version that we published today is frozen. And if somebody wanted to uh, cite us, mm -hmm. or if we wanted to put a chapter in a book, which we sometimes do about this kind of thing, we could provide this DOI and a reference to ourselves. Or if we want to put it in our annual faculty report so for our <laughs> annual review. <Yeah. laughs> and so that is, it's one of those things that actually takes more time to demonstrate than to do in mm. terms of uh, publishing a, a, a snapshot release of a GitHub repository in Sonoto. And we realize this is not something that everyone's necessarily going to do. Everyone doesn't necessarily have code, but for those who do, now, if we wanted to write an article about this and or publish a, some data set related to this, we could also link this record to a corresponding data set in Dryad. Mm -hmm. So these linkages um, become, uh, they can be automated. To right. And if you open up the uh, edit for the metadata, we can see the, the edit button up top. And there you see. go. Yep. That will take you to the metadata editor because mm -hmm. Zenodo pulled a minimum amount of metadata based on the information it could read out of the GitHub repository. Mm -hmm. But this is where um, you can see all of the other uh, elements that can be filled in to make it, to increase the discoverability, mm -hmm. the understanding and usability of the content to this repository. Right, so I can add keywords. Um, my description's a little thin if I wanna go back and update that later. I had a code repository that I published with a, a colleague and it had my full name and her GitHub username which didn't do her any good. So I came in here and I, I, I updated the author's name. In this case, it pulled both of us from our ORCID records. Mm -hmm. um, so 